welcome to Hillfields Church, Coventry, and to all of you who are online. At the last count, over 800 viewings. Over 1,000 now is the latest update. And we have come together to witness the marriage of James and Heidi. And uh, that's a marriage in the sight of God. It's a great day, isn't it? I can tell you it's been looked forward to for a very long time. (laughs) At points, we've wondered whether it would happen at all or whether there would only be five of us here today. But prayer has been answered, and here we are, about 30 of us here in the building, and as I say, lots more online. The words from the book of Psalms seem to be even more applicable than usual. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray. Dear God and Father, we thank you for bringing us to this joyful day, the marriage of James and Heidi. We thank you for the privilege of sharing their joy We thank you for your watchful care over them throughout their lives and for the love you have given to them for each other and for you. We ask for your special blessing to be on Heidi and James as they make their vows to each other. And we ask this in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now the congregation may take a seat. In the presence of the one true living God, we have come together to witness the marriage of James and Heidi, to pray for them, to share their joy and celebrate their love. The Bible is clear that marriage is not the invention of society or culture or even of the church. Marriage was created by God and given from the beginning to enable all humanity to flourish so that everyone can better know the Lord's grace and goodness. Our Lord Jesus Christ honored this relationship by his presence at a wedding in Cana in Galilee. Marriage is given so that husband and wife may help each other, living faithfully both in joy and in sorrow. Marriage is the place for people to learn about covenant love. Lifelong love based on promises faithfully given and received. In the Bible, Jesus is the bridegroom. God's people are pictured as a bride. Jesus loves by sacrificing his life for his people. God's people love by submitting to Jesus' loving leadership. A healthy marriage shows everyone what it looks like to be in a right relationship with the living Lord God. God's gift of marriage enriches society and strengthens community. It is a sign of unity and loyalty which we all do well to uphold and honour. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. Heidi and James are now to enter this covenant. They will acknowledge their readiness, give their consent each to the other, make solemn vows, and give and receive rings. If anyone can show any just cause why they may not be lawfully united in marriage, Let them declare it now or else forever hold their peace. So as we stand together in the presence of God who knows all about us and before whom you must one day appear, James and Heidi, do you acknowledge that God as the loving creator of all things is the giver of marriage, the one who has brought you together to be married? We do. We do. Having read the scriptures and prayed together, 
Are you ready to come together today in marriage? We are. We are. Are you, James, free lawfully to marry Heidi? I am. Are you, Heidi, free lawfully to marry James? I am. James, will you take Heidi to be your wife, to live together as God has directed in the special relationship of marriage? Will you seek to love her as Christ loved the church? Will you comfort, honor, and keep her in sickness and in health? And will you keep exclusively to her as long as you both live? With God's help, I will. Heidi, will you take James to be your husband, to live together as God has directed, in the special relationship of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, and keep him in sickness and in health, and keep exclusively to him as long as you both live? God's help, I will. Who brings Heidi to be married to James? I'm now going to ask you all to agree to support Heidi and James in their marriage. If you feel able to commit to this after the next question, please answer, with God's help, we will. So I ask you, the families and friends of Heidi and James, will you do all in your power to support and encourage them in their marriage? With God's help, we will. So James, you ready? After me. I, James Bryn Carter. I, James Bryn Carter. Take you, Heidi Ann Crowter. Take you, Heidi Ann Crowter. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and cherish. To love and cherish. Till death parts us. Till death parts us. In the presence of God I make this vow. In the presence of God I make this vow. Now Heidi, it's you. I, Heidi Ann Crowter. I, Heidi Ann Crowter. Take you, James Bryn Carter. Take you, James Bryn Carter. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death parts us. Till death parts us. In the presence of God I make this vow. In the presence of God I make this vow. So the rings can now be used, and these rings signify that these promises and this union shall remain unbroken while life shall last. Heidi, I give you this ring as a sign of, as a sign of our love, to love and to cherish. I will always love you. A token of the promises I have made. A token of the promises I have made you today. Well done. As a sign of my love, Heidi. Here you go. Lovely. I give you this ring. And the token of all the promises that I make you today, and a sign of my love. Never mind. Very well, very well done. We, we can finish the job off later. <laughs> That's it. Brilliant. She nearly forgot that. Sorry. I 
couldn't fit to me. Yeah. We're, we're there. <laughs> Sorry. We're there. Yeah. Yes, it does. There was a slight touch. In the presence of God and before this congregation, James and Heidi have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. I therefore declare them husband and wife, whom God has joined together, let no one separate. James, you may kiss your bride. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Now we're going to ask Matthew Sharp, who's James's pastor, to come and lead us in prayer. Thank you, Matthew. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, our loving Heavenly Father, how we give thanks to you with joy in our hearts for this day that we've been able to witness James and Heidi taking those vows in your sight. First of all, we thank you that they are children of God. Through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, they have been counted as your children. And you are fitting them for that eternal home in heaven. And so as they've made their vows, they are expressing their faith, yes, in one another to keep those vows, but most of all in you to help them. As they've said, so may God help us to, give, uh, to, to keep those vows that they have made. For, Lord, there will be challenges, there will be times of joy, as well as times of hardship. May they look to you at all times for the direction and guidance they need, for the grace and patience that they will need, and for all the, the equipping that you long to give them to serve you together as a married couple as we've been reminded in that wedding ceremony, to give a picture of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ for his people. May their marriage speak that loud and clear in the joy that they share, in the faithfulness that you enable. We pray for their families. Help them to be a support and a help to them. We pray for the church families, that they too will pray for them and help them in keeping their vows. And in all of these things, we look to you. For Lord, without you, you we, we can do so little. We are so frail, we are so weak, even at the strongest times, even at the happiest times. So often that is tinged with our sinful nature. For Lord, we thank you that by your Spirit you overcome these things and make us strong in the Lord. May this day be the beginning of many days of your strength and your grace. To the glory of God the Father, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And now James Young, who's a pastor here in the church at Hillfield Church Commentary, is going to read from the Bible. So we have two readings, um, Bible readings, one from the Old Testament, which is Psalm 139, part of that psalm. And then one from the New Testament, which is 1 Corinthians 13, a part of that chapter also. For you, Lord, formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you, when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. I awake and I am still with you. 
Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Thank you, James. So I want to follow uh, those readings with just a, a few more words from the Bible, one of the wisdom books of the Old Testament, the book of Ecclesiastes. This is a passage that we looked at, James and Heidi, in our marriage prep. And it says this, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Heidi and James, Mr. and Mrs. Carter, I want to talk to you today about numbers one, two, and three, where one is precious, where two is a mystery, and where three, when it's the right three, is powerful. One is precious. James, you on your own are priceless. Parents and your family and your friends and your church family, but above all, you're precious to God. God gave you life. The Bible says that it's in him that we live and move and have our being. Heidi, you too are precious, priceless. As one person on your own, you are. Yes, you too are precious to your parents and to your family and to your friends and to your church family. Above all, you are precious to God. I remember holding you in my arms when you were just a few hours old, 25 years ago yesterday. And in that moment when I held you in my arms, I just knew that you are precious. A few weeks later, after you'd been desperately ill and we thought we were going to lose you, we had your dedication here in this church. And we were giving thanks to God for answers to prayer, wonderful answers to prayer. At that time, I was preaching through an Old Testament book called the book of Malachi. And I knew I was coming to a passage where it says, God says, they shall be mine on that day when I wake up, make up my jewels. And I think as I shared that verse with your family and with the church on that day, it made everybody take you to our hearts and realize that you indeed are precious. Later when I baptized you, when you made your own testimony of faith in Jesus, when you were nearly 13 years old, we remembered the same words. God says, I will make you my jewel. Every single one of us has a precious soul. The soul is the part of you that goes on forever and ever. The only way you can be right with God in this deep spiritual side of you, and we all have that, is through faith in Jesus Christ. By believing in him, we have deep peace. We have the forgiveness of our sins. We have eternal life. We have inner healing, and that's because Jesus 
is precious. Jesus is so special. He is unique. There's no one else like him. He is the only one who is the Son of God and both God and man. He is our one and only Saviour. And we must come to him one by one. There's no other way to come to him. Each person has to stand before God on their own. It's a very personal thing. If you're here or watching Heidi and James's wedding online today and you don't have this personal relationship with God, you can have it. You need to come just as you are to God and ask him to have mercy on you because of Jesus. Trust in what Jesus did on the cross. We are not saved by what we do, you see, but by what Jesus has done. It's amazing grace. It's a personal thing that happens to us one by one. It's a work of God's Holy Spirit. Jesus called it being born again. Heidi and James, you both love singing hymns, don't you? You're really enthusiastic singers. Sometimes it has to be said just a bit over. <laughs> enthusiastic. <laughs> Together, you make, a, you make a joyful noise. I think it's important we just make a note of that on this day when we can't do any singing. It's a real shame, isn't it? Or perhaps it isn't. <laughs> But the reason that you love singing Christian songs is because they're all about Jesus, aren't they? The joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, I think that you two have probably given more thought to what we call the sanctity of life, the preciousness of life, than most other people have. I really think that. You both feel very passionately about it. That's why we read Psalm 139 just now. It's your motto text. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You just know, don't you, that life is a, is a gift from God. And you know that life can be lived with great joy and enthusiasm. And we're just so glad that you're here. You know... One person, with or without that extra chromosome, is precious. One is precious. Two is a mystery. James and Heidi and Hazel and I have done marriage prep together. We've had some great times. One of the ideas we've looked at is covenant. Marriage is a covenant, an agreement made before God. You just made your covenant promises to each other. And your friends here and online are witnesses. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. This book of wisdom in the Bible says that two are better than one, and it gives reasons. If one person falls down, then well, the second person can pick them up. Two can keep each other warm. Two can protect each other. Two people can do more than twice as much as one. The Bible also tells us that in marriage, two people actually, in the sight of God, become one. Two people become one. And that's the mystery. That's the mystery. Back in the book of Genesis, when God created the world and placed human beings in it, God said, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That is the mystery. And that's why James and Heidi's marriage must be respected by all of us, by their support workers, by their friends, by their family, by their church family, because these two are now one in the sight of God. And that is a picture, as we've seen, of the relationship between Jesus 
and those who believe in him. We belong to him and he belongs to us. So you two, now as a married couple, have a new opportunity to share and to show the love of Jesus. And it's exciting that in your love for each other, unconditional love, you can show what God's love is like. You can really do that with God's help. You see, God has been planning this day as well, hasn't he? Not only you. God has been planning it. And he's brought you together today to bring you together in one. So one is precious, two is a mystery. What did we say about three? Well done, you were listening. Powerful. Three is powerful. You see, this passage from the Bible mentions not only one and two, but also three, and it says that a cord or rope of three strands is not quickly broken. I once watched ropes being made. They had incredible breaking strength. James, guess how many ropes or cords were twisted around each other? in making ropes. Any thoughts, Heidi? Three. Three. Threefold cord. That's it. Threefold cord. Can't easily be broken. To admit you need help isn't a sign of weakness. That's the case for all of us. To admit that you need help is not a sign of of weakness, as long as it's the right help. And you both recognize that you need help in your marriage. And you've got some strong support around you, haven't you? You've got some good support workers. You're surrounded today by a lot of love, aren't you? A lot of love. And the support network that you have will help you be strong in your marriage. But when this book of wisdom talks about a cord of three strands, the third strand that it mostly has in mind is, who do you think? God. God, God. God himself. The third cord is God. And that's where the real power lies, isn't it? That's where we have real power. God is your refuge and strength, a very present help. So when things do get hard, and when it doesn't seem easy to keep your marriage promises to each other, and those days will come, remember that one is precious, two is a mystery, and three is powerful when you have God with you. You heard what our Bible reading said about love. Love is patient it is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. That's what real love looks like on the ground. And it's a high standard and we can see the love that you do have for each other today. But you need to know, and I think you do know this, that it's more than romantic love. It's covenant love. And that's the love that is going to hold you two together by the grace of God. So I hope you will be able to remember just a simple one, two, and three. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask Peter, who's one of the elders of the church here, to come and close our time together in prayer. Shall we all pray? <clears throat> Living God, our Father in heaven, we worship you in your indescribable beauty, the beauty of your love and your grace, that you are too wise to make a mistake too good to be unkind. 
and we worship you for bringing us together to this day. We thank you for the way you have watched over Heidi and James throughout their lives thus far. We thank you again for converting them and giving them real living faith in Jesus. And we thank you for their love for each other and in that context of their love for you. We thank you, Lord, for the reminder that they are so precious and each one of us is precious. And we thank you again that we worship you, Lord Jesus, as the most precious person of all. And we do pray that each one of us might be a true believer in Jesus. We pray for James and Heidi in their marriage together, that they may radiate the love of Jesus in their relationship, that may be a good witness to others. Lord, you know that every marriage needs patience and saying sorry and forgiveness. Lord, give that every day, we pray, to James and Heidi. And Lord, do bless them as they seek to serve you in their life together, here in the church, in their home, in their campaigning. Lord, do be with them in every aspect of their life. Lord, we thank you that you are part of the threefold cord and we pray you will help carers, church family, uh, natural family, all to play their part in being part of the community that loves and cares for James and Heidi. But most of all, we commend them to you and have that confidence, Lord, that you will look after them and support them. And so, Lord, as we come to the end of this service, we are praying, we are asking for your blessing, not just on James and Heidi, but on all those involved in this occasion. We pray for each one here in this building. We pray for each person in the Downs Syndrome community. We pray for each person joining in online with the live stream. Lord, we are so full of joy that your love and your grace is so great and so powerful it can reach everyone. And that's what we're asking, Lord, as we thank you for the joy and the gladness of this day as we pray in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Amen.